Hi everyone, I'm Dan Fullerton and I'd like to talk to you today about Newton's first law of motion. Our objectives are going to be to state Newton's first law of motion and then talk about how for objects under the influence of several forces, how we analyze situations in which the particle remains at rest as well as analyzing situations in which the particle remains in motion at constant velocity, which as we're quickly going to learn is really just another facet of the same type of motion. So let's start by talking about Newton's first law of motion itself. The velocity of an object will remain constant unless acted upon by a net force. This means that an object at rest will remain at rest and an object in motion will continue in motion with the with the same speed and the same direction or at constant velocity unless it's acted upon by a net force. Now it's important to note that Newton's laws of motion only hold in an inertial reference frame which for simplicity's sake let's say means that we're in a non-accelerating frame of reference. There's a little bit more to it than that but that should serve us well at least as we begin. You may have also heard this talked about as the law of inertia where inertia is an object's resistance to being accelerated. More massive objects are harder to accelerate. They require more force to accelerate. So mass is a measure of an object's inertia. And we typically measure an object's inertial mass in terms of kilograms as our base unit. Now, when we're talking about Newton's first law of motion, it's helpful to also define some items such as equilibrium. Static equilibrium occurs when the net force and the net torque on an object is zero and the object is at rest. So the object's at rest, it doesn't have any net force on it, doesn't have any net torque on it causing it to spin, it's going to remain at rest. Mechanical equilibrium, on the other hand, the net force and net torque on an object is zero, but the object doesn't have to remain at rest. So if you have the net force of zero and a net torque on an object, it could be in motion, but it's going to remain in that exact same state of motion, a constant velocity, no acceleration. And finally, translational equilibrium occurs when we're talking about the net force on an object being zero. No net force, therefore the object can be at rest or moving at a constant velocity. It will not accelerate. So let's take a look at a fairly standard translational equilibrium problem. The one of the traffic light, where we have a 10 kilogram traffic light that is suspended from a beam as shown here in the diagram. Find the tension in each of the three cables supporting the traffic light. We've got T1, T2, and T3. How do we go about solving this? Well, I always like to begin with the diagram. And we'll start with the free body diagram, probably for the traffic light. So there's our traffic light. We have the weight or gravitational force of the Earth on the traffic light, mg. And we must have some tension, T3, in the cable. Well, by this definition, Newton's first law, or more specifically, a generalization of Newton's second law, the net force vertically in the y direction, and let's call up the positive y direction and to the right the positive x direction, the net force in the y direction is equal to the mass times the acceleration in the y direction. And because it's not accelerating, we know this must be zero. So I can replace F net y with my two forces. The net force, we've got T3 up, and minus mg down must equal zero. Therefore, T3 must be equal to mg, or in this case, 10 kilograms times our acceleration due to gravity. In this case, let's round that to 10 meters per second squared down, or 100 newtons. There's the tension in the third cable. To find the tension in the other two cables, though, we've got to do things a little bit differently. Let's take a look and let's analyze for this ring here. Let's draw the free body diagram for that ring. In that case, we've got T3 pulling down, which is 100 newtons. We also have T2 at an angle of 30 degrees. If this angle is 30, then that angle there must be 30 degrees. And we have T1 operating at an angle of 60 degrees. So we can go back to our Newton's second law equations. The net force in the x direction, again it's not accelerating so we know they must sum up to zero, is going to be equal to the x component of T2, T2 cos 30 degrees, minus T1 cosine 60 degrees, all must be equal to zero. 
in the y direction, you could say that net force in the y direction, we'll look at the y components of our forces, must be T1 sine 60 degrees plus T2 sine 30 degrees. Now we have minus T3, which we know is 100 newtons, equal to zero. All right, let's go back to that first equation. We have cosine 30, cosine 60, T1 and T2. Let's see if we can't solve for T1 as a function of T2. T2 cos 30 minus T1 cos 60 equals zero, so I could write that T2 cos 30 degrees equals T1 cos 60 degrees. And if I divide both sides by cosine of 60, I get that T1 equals T2 cosine 30 degrees over cosine 60 degrees, which as it turns out is equal to 1.732 times T2. Now let's go back to our second equation. This F net Y equation, now that we know what T1 is equal to, we can put this all in terms of one variable, T2. So if we write this as T1 sine 60 degrees plus T2 sine 30 degrees equals 100 newtons. That implies then, since we know that T1 is equal to 1.732 T2, that we can write this as 1.732 times sine of 60 degrees times T2 plus sine 30 degrees T2 equals 100 newtons. Little bit of rearrangement here, 1.732 times the sine of 60 degrees, that's gonna be 1.5 T2 plus sine 30 T2, that's 0 0.5 T2 equals 100 newtons. Therefore, 2 T2 equals 100 or T2 is equal to 50 newtons. Now what we can do with that 50 newtons is we can take that value and plug it back into our equation that T1 equals 1.732 times T2. So if T1 equals 1.732 times T2, that's 1.732 times 50 newtons or 86.6 newtons. We know T1, we know T2, and we know T3. We've solved for the tension in all of those cables, all using our concept of equilibrium and Newton's first law coupled with Newton's second law. And really, Newton's first law is a generalization of the first law. So hopefully that'll get you started with Newton's first law of motion. If you have questions or are looking for more help, check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks and make it a great day.